All right, um, so we guess we can kind of officially get started here. Welcome everyone again to the SIG storage uh, meeting for Kubevert. And why don't we jump right into the topic? So the first one that we have is uh, discussing Michael's comment on DV controllers. And I'm going to just switch over to that comment for context. Um, and in the meantime, I guess with the person who wrote down the agenda item, please feel free to jump in and take the introduction. I just edited it. Um, actually, I just noticed it two days ago. Uh, last month we did a, a really uh, a dramatic <laughs> refactoring of the huge uh, data volume controller we had. We split it to uh, three controllers, and uh, currently, uh, currently uh, Alex is uh, further uh, splitting it for the clone uh, controller. Uh, so one of the changes was the splitting the reconcile into uh, sync and update status, uh, similar to the way Qubit. Uh, is designed uh, and uh, Michael just added a note that uh, currently uh, we have shared uh, data between the two functions, uh, sync and the update status, which uh, uh, is not what uh, intended by uh, the, the split. Uh, and uh, may lead to several uh, possible uh, issues, like the one just encountered by this, uh, uh, by the issue that this PR is fixing. Um, now we raised here several points, uh, both myself and Alex and uh, Alvaro, uh, regarding uh, the change proposed by uh, Michael. And I think that uh, it first that uh, Michael would first uh, uh, present his uh, point of view. Okay, thanks for the, thanks for the, the intro, Arnon. Um, right, so I'm just trying to think in terms of, for me, I think I have a general understanding that the sync part of the process is um, applying some logic uh, based on some things that our controller is doing, then the update status is generally, in, at least in Kubevert, a separate process that observes those changes that may have been made to objects in order to properly record what we assess to be the status of those objects. Uh, I think that's a pretty like basic way of saying it. Um, so Michael, you want to jump in or weigh in a little bit on the comment here? I think the yeah, goal- Yeah, I mean, that. That's basically it. Uh, the, the sync part of the controller work is about, um, yeah, doing the real work, uh, looking looking at, uh, you know, you, these controllers are basically, you know, state machines. So just look, um, you know, figure out where we're at and do the next thing. Um, and update status uh, is about, you know, reporting what the current state is. Um, and, you know, I think at a theoretical level, these, these are two things that, two operations that can be totally separate, you know. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and um, obviously I think that there is some potentially like, you know, um, they both, you know, kind of take a look at the universe and either, you know, in sync, we do something about it and update status, we update the status about it. Mm -hmm. um, and if you look at like uh, Kubevert, they're, they're really separate. Um, so like the update status sometimes doesn't have, you know, the most recent changes. Because if you just updated a resource or just created a resource, uh, update status, um, you know, just based on the way uh, some of these resources are cached and stuff, it may not have picked up picked up the latest change yet. 
Mm -hmm. But eventually, you know, the reconcile will get called again and it will get the, you know, the most recent change. So sometimes it's a little, their update status is a little late, but mm -hmm. they're really two entirely separate functions. Um, and yeah, there, there is definitely, um, so, and there's really no kind of state shared between them. I think I'm not totally opposed to like, you know, maybe there is a case to share some data, but things like, I think what's problematic now is like, there's a struct return by sync that has like PVCs in it, data volumes in it, stuff like that. Those are things that can be easily um, retrieved by update status on their own, and there's no reason to agree. Pass them along, we, I think we totally agree about this one about the PVC and the data volume. But the other stuff, like the event, there is a little bit more problematic. Well, then I think we should, uh, you know, uh, enumerate on the. I think the next step then is probably. You can enumerate the stuff that we can get rid of, the stuff that you think should stay, and we can we can see if what makes sense. I mean, um, but I, I think um, you know we should just in general try to share state um, or pass state along as as little as possible. It seems to me that uh, if you consider that CDI were to be interrupted after a sync uh, passed, but before the update status passed, um, any kind of uh, context that's passed between those two operations could be lost and potentially causing a bug, right? Um, is there anything that, is it only a, for efficiency or an optimization that we pass data or um, is would something get lost in the shuffle, for example, if CDI were to restart at the, most inopportune time. Uh, nothing will, will be lost in the next reconcile to be recalculated again. Uh, I don't okay. think something will lost. Yeah, I think I think it really is about um, optimization. You know, if if right. the sync can, you know, uh, yeah, I think it really is just optimization. Um, Agree. And um, the, you know, yeah, and like this bug, basically the issue was there was kind of, I think, um, a transient error or something. But I didn't, I think the general issue is there could be a transient error or something weird that happens in sync that, you know, pollutes this shared state. Um, and just, you know, the most direct I... route is eliminate shared states. <laughs> And I'm pretty sure there's like, we can easily enumerate the things that can uh, pollute the state. It's, I think it's exactly the PVC and the data volume. And I'm pretty sure we already handled the data volume being nil or stuff like that. So I think the only thing that can actually affect the pollute, pollute the status update is the PVC at this point. I think the event okay. that gets passed is, uh, I think that's bulletproof. Uh, if you don't get it once, you'll get it the next time. If it isn't passed properly, it, it'll get passed properly the next time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so it sounds like we might have a next uh, next step, which is, I guess it's. it sounds like it might be Arnon that's going to be looking to enumerate. Right. Uh, uh, let's see uh, the elements that can be removed from the uh, the stink return value in order to have a clearer. Separation of state between the two processes. Right. I guess it seems like the general consensus on there. Is there any other topics or any other elements of this that we wanted to discuss before moving on to the next topic? Uh, yeah, so I think um, my or a proposal for going forward is that we can um, merge 
Alex's PR and then um, Arnon or Alex or whoever is going to continue the work can um, create a separate PR that um, where we can, um, you know, deal with the refactoring um, and have more in-depth discussions there. Right. Okay, sounds good. Okay, great. Um, anything else on this one? Okay, next topic uh, about the CDI release schedule. Who wants to take that? Was that you that added it, Alexander? Can you hear me? Yes. Perfect. All right, All right. new laptop. I'm going to find the right input device. Um, yeah, I just wanted to make sure everybody was aware that, you know, a release schedule used to be every three weeks. Um, but uh, I think it makes sense to match Kubevert, uh, which is uh, every three uh, months now. Um, especially the last, I would say, 10 releases were basically fixing, you know, a few bugs and, and a minor feature. And it just isn't really worth doing a release every three weeks for that. So... Mm -hmm. um, that's a really <clears throat> lot to, to say about that. So you know that's that's why there hasn't been a release in a while, just because we want to match Kubert. Is it worth having a message out to the Kubert dev list just to collect any uh, any ideas? I don't expect this to be controversial at all. It makes pretty pretty much sense to me. Yeah, I can I can do that. One question is: Is this does this mean we we will freeze the same date for? Hubert uh, tomorrow, which is tomorrow. Uh, well, I, I think we should uh, we should release like a few days after, uh, sort of like Hubert does with uh, Kubernetes. Um, and uh, I don't think we've officially um, designated a freeze date, um, but yeah, we probably should. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I mean, development continues uh, in the main branch, regardless. Right. We 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 haven't done any like release candidates like Cooper does. So we've just released it, and you know, if we find an issue, we just make a a, a Z release uh, to fix it. That's really what we've done uh, for now. That's yeah, why we're on you know one fifty five dot. Who I want to say just we found a few minor issues that needed to get fixed. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't think we're I don't think we need any release candidates at this point. Uh, it's a solution looking for a problem, in my view. Right. Okay. All right. Thanks for that update. So we'll uh, take any discussion on that uh, into the mailing list if there would be any. Um, okay. So let's go on to the next topic regarding scratch space who wants to pull who wants to grab this one uh yeah so this is another an issue that came in um from the community uh the other day um i don't know if you want to open the link oh of course yep um so basically um the 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 issue here is if you scroll like it so if you look at that out oh, right below the describe on import, er, importer pod output there's a it's a super long line if you scroll all the way if you go up but like uh yeah it, what happened is um so this was an import by default um if you guys recall um if we're importing a queue cow to directly we we you know uh don't download the we basically don't download the file to scratch space. Um, but in doing that, the way the QMU image import process works is it makes a ton of small requests to the HTTP server on the other end. Um, in this case, uh, you know, you make a lot of these requests and we've seen a bunch of issues. Um, usually what people complain about is that it's really slow. So if, um, 
you know, if there's a lot of latency or the, the server on the other side is doing some throttling, it just, you know, it is way faster to just download the thing to scratch space and then do the conversion. Mm -hmm. uh, similarly, there's, there's, there's this error here where I guess sometimes, um, you know, uh, maybe we, we are, you know, in the middle of converting it, but occasionally like the server will return an error and then it just dies like has happened here. So it's like a little more, um, and then I guess we fail and start over again. So it's a little oh more God. less, um, resilient than the like kind of download to scratch space uh strategy as well um can you hear me? yeah um so there's mbd kit has two filters you can use to avoid both of these issues it has um, a retry filter that will retry transient errors and it has um a, a read ahead filter that will basically read forward so it'll be pulling down data constantly and linearly um, into a, a memory cache, um, which will ensure that basically uh, you won't need to be doing lots and lots of small requests, or, although it does depend somewhat on the exact topology of the network as to whether that really works well. Um, so there are, there are ways to, to avoid this without needing to use scratch space um, by adding these filters. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think that this is, um, you know, this is just generally an issue that that keeps coming up. And I think, yeah, I think those are definitely uh, two things to investigate. Um, you know, how to, it, it's just that, you know, the, this directly importing is, uh, we should probably revisit and find out, you know, I think, by default, we should do the way that is maybe not the best performant, but is the most um, reliable and uh, uh, resilient way. Um, but anyway, I think that this is a topic that, I don't know, I think this is worthy of potentially like a research spike and coming up with a, a strategy that makes the most sense in most cases. Um, do we have like, um, enumerated somewhere all the different cases because I, I know that there's quite a few of them and I couldn't I couldn't sit here even though I've yeah I've they're mostly in GitHub issues like I think this uh, I added another link here this is the like main issue where where the performance is a problem mm -hmm. uh, for someone um, but the, you know I think those are the these are the two main things like you know and we see a lot of times people are using like um you know they're, they're forcing the scratch base thing by by you know using like a um a gzipped qcow or something um that that's what actually hypershift does mm -hmm. um so, so i don't know um yeah i think it would be interesting for me to see a table that says when the format is is X, uh, you know, we have, we, you know, either are using NBD kit in this case, or we're using a full download to scratch space. I, I think that's been collected at some Yeah, point, we have, but... I think some docs somewhere in the CDI repo that I think, um, well, maybe, I don't know that it, it um, I think it may just be more of a general support matrix, but um, mm -hmm. I, I, I yeah, I just think that this, um, you know, direct QCA2 conversion is um, not optimal in a lot of cases is all. And I think it, it may be optimal on the uh, usage of scratch space, but um, maybe that's not what people care about the most. Oh, thanks for adding that, Alex. Uh, so I know that like there's a related bit of work on uh, maybe Richard, you can tell us uh, if there's any updates on it, but I think you guys uh, were looking at doing uh, using the new populators API that was with a, an implementation of um, of NBD kit within that um, for more specific targeted use cases that that's using that. Um, Am I remembering correctly, or is there some active work in that area? I think Tom Ash was looking at something like that um, for Vertly to be. 
Um, okay. I'm not sure exactly what the specific thing you talk about, but maybe Aliche looked at that. I'm, I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, the reason I bring it up is I do think that, you know, as we start moving towards um, populators, there is a really good opportunity to have um, really small populator implementations that can be used uh, and targeted. And so then it does maybe make the case for having CDI do things in a really general but consistent and simple way. And then, you know, if you want, if folks want to experiment with uh, optimizing that flow for certain cases or other things, there's a really good opportunity to implement that inside of a populator. Um, and that can be the laboratory for, um, for innovation, I guess, in, in the area. So just kind of throwing it out, I wasn't sure um, to what extent we've made progress there. Okay. All right. So I don't, yeah, I guess I don't know if there's if we'll come to a conclusion, but um, but we do have the uh, filters, and so I should write that note down. That NVD is uh, as a it's a retry and read ahead filters. Um, yeah, I've I put a link in the um, issue actually. With links okay, great. Those. But you do need to use these because, I and mean, we have the same problem in Vert B two B that it, you know, if you just use, um, uh, you just use the basic curl plugin, it has all the problems that you described. But I sort of assumed that you'd be using the filters on top, which is which are designed for this. They're meant to exactly the same thing. We recover from you know, like network failures and um, yeah, reading ahead and there's a caching filter as well you can use. So um, I'll, I'll try to pull out actually what Vert B2B does because it, if you layer the filters in the right way, you can you can get kind of quite reliable and good performance. But. Okay. Is there a way to control the, the uh, memory usage for the read ahead plugin? Um, right, so the, the read ahead plugin actually uh, just prefetches the data and then it relies on you having a, sorry, filter, and then it relies on you having another filter below it to actually do the caching and then you can control where that caching uh, is okay. done. Um, okay. I mean, I'm, I, I don't think the read ahead filter is actually going to be that useful. I think we tried it in Vert B2B and it wasn't, it's sort of conceptually great, but it doesn't actually work in sort of realistic cases mm. um, but the caching um, the cache filter is is pretty essential um, okay remember, you, you remember it's it's only caching a certain limited amount so it's not like it's doing a full download if you if you use the cache filter mm -hmm. you can limit how many people store locally so you kind of get the best of having a sort of a local cache but without actually having to have unlimited amounts of space scratch space around yeah, okay. Uh, okay, so if we take a look, you know, if you do, if you are able to uh, edit it or add a comment to the issue for maybe how the filters are stacked for vert V to V, it's something that could that we could try to uh, implement and see if it if it helps. Yeah, sure. Great, thanks. All right. Uh, any other uh, comments on this one for now? All right. Should we move on to image pull secrets? I'm not sure who. Yeah, this uh, I added this one as well. Basically, Community again. Uh, this is something that has come up a couple times. It's a feature that um, is in Kubevert that we don't support. Um, so I think if you want to, uh, for example, um, you have images uh, 
in registries that need authentication or authorization, um, there there are there are ways to do it. Um, and you know, this is just you know something if you if you look down somewhere there's a reference to the Qvert PR, but um, it, it's really to have kind of parity with Qvert. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it might be neat if we could actually use the same object so that um, that they don't have to create a, a parallel config for CDI specifically. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Okay, well, I will offer this as a exercise for the attendees later to look into it um, further. <clears throat> So is anything we want to achieve here on the call about it or is it just kind of calling? No, I mean, I think it's, I think it's something we should do. I mean, I think we just, you know, we talked about it, I think a couple months ago and didn't do anything and people are still talking about it. Um, it should just mm -hmm. be, um, yeah, some, something we do. So is this something that could work with both of our registry import techniques? Uh, yeah, that would be great. Yeah. I mean, I'm... I mean, I guess if we, when we're using the, the, uh, node based pull approach, that's, uh, that would use the existing. Kubernetes yeah. I mean, I think a lot of the time though, and, you know, I think I was discussing the other issue, you know, you don't have access to, um, the node a lot of time. So, but it would be better to, have to, you know, do this and not a um, every single resource level kind of thing or um, hack up manifest and stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I, I think the main issue for the reporter is that their notes um, don't have access to the registry that contains the images for CDI. Okay. It's, it's a to me it was a really strange setup where essentially the nodes go to one registry but then uh pulling some of this stuff is coming from a different registry that needs a different pool server yeah i mean the obvious it seems the obvious solution there would be to configure to to give your nodes access to um all the registries that are needed to operate your workload and then mm -hmm. um uh, apparently, in their environment, it has to be set up like this. Uh, I, I I talked to him a little bit, and it, it was weird. Um, but uh, you know, apparently, Kubeword has a mechanism where you can provide a particular pool secret for the uh, images used for uh, you know the it, it's for like the uh, the the control plane uh not for the actual imports it's for mainly the control plane is, is what okay the issue is. that's what i was going to ask is if, if it was like for container disks for example but okay yeah it, from what i could tell it wasn't from from you know, the actual workload it was from running the control plane uh and it, it seemed really weird to me and my initial thought was well, well why don't you just configure your nodes to actually just get access to it but for some reason. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I guess if you're having, I don't know, if you're using like Kubernetes as a service somehow, you you probably don't have access to nodes. Um. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's why they they wanted this, and they were like, "Well, Kubernetes did it, can CDI do it?" So. so this is about installing essentially this like um, the CDI deployment, the images that are for. CDI, not the like uh, the virtual machine disk images, right? Okay, because yeah. that those would be two completely different features. It seems right. like okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it <laughs> it could be something that that we overload, but yeah, as the reporter reported it, it's just to get you know, um, for like. For control for deployment, I mean uh, CDI deployment, whatever. Okay. Well, it seems like we've got a uh, yeah a working pattern to go from, so it'd be a relatively straightforward um, effort. 
All right. So, um, yeah, unless anybody wants to put their name down on it uh, right now, we'll leave the discourse to the issue, I suppose. Yeah, we should probably just make a Jira card and put it on the backlog. Okay. Um, right. Sounds good. So we can take, yeah, we could take that offline. Um, all right, sounds good. So that is the end of the agenda as written. Does anybody else have a topic they'd like to bring up now? Sounds like not at the moment. Nobody has anything. Uh, any interesting stuff they're working on they want to share I suppose we don't have to force it so um given that I guess we can end a little bit early today so thanks everyone for joining and we'll thank see you oh go ahead no, I don't know I was just saying thank you okay great all <laughs> right so uh hopefully we'll see you all back in about two weeks um I'll go ahead and pre-populate <clears throat> the agenda block for the next one so that over the course of the next couple of weeks, if you have something that comes up, please feel free to add. And everyone have a great week. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.